When working in Connect Effects, there are many different ways of connecting your nodes and controlling those connections. I have a clip here that I want to add a stylized effect to it, and I also want to add some graphics. So I want to bring this into Connect Effects. So with the clip selected, I go to my Effects ribbon, I choose Create Connect Effects. Looking in the schematic view, we can see our nodes, and here's our original media source, and then we have our node, which is our end result, going back out to our timeline. Immediately we see there are different color inputs and outputs from the different nodes and these colors help you to understand what each input or output represents. Anywhere you see a yellow output, that is the end result of the node. So coming out of my clip, I have a yellow output, which is the RGB information. Then coming out of the yellow output, there's a red line that connects to the red input of my output node. The red indicates the RGB or front input of a node. And then you'll notice there is a blue output and a blue input for the, each node. The blue input and output represent an alpha or a mat information. So you can feed in the alpha information, a mask or a mat input to control what a node will affect. And then of course our output node has a triangle that is yellow indicating the main output. I wanna create a very stylized color look for this image. So I'm going to come down to my tools. I'll take the color warper tool. I'll drag it in. I'll hold the option key. And when I drag the node over the connection line, it highlights and I'll release. Automatically, Smoke will take the yellow output from my original footage, feed it into the red front input for the color warper, and then take the yellow output of the color warper and feed it into the red input of the output node. Also notice there's a green input for the color warper. Anytime you see a green input, that indicates there are compositing capabilities with that tool or that node. And that is your background or your back input. I'll double click on my color warper tool to access its parameters. The first thing I'll do is take my black and start to drag it down a little bit. Then I'll take my white and increase the white. I'll take the shadow trackball and start dragging this down into a blue. I'll take the highlight trackball and drag this more into a yellow. I'll switch my warp option to be my gamma controls. Now I can access my red curves and take the red midtone and drag it down. I'll take the green and I'll drag that down a little bit also. I'll leave the blue channel alone. So now I've created the grade, the color effect that I wanted. But I only want part of my image to be affected by this color correction. So that's why we have the blue matte input. I'll click on my effects nodes to bring my effects tools back up. As we already know, Connect Effects offers us an extremely wide variety of tools. To quickly find a tool you're looking for, you can hit the first letter that corresponds with the tool you want to find. I want to find my G mask. So I hit the G key and all the tools that start with G will now be highlighted. I'll take the garbage mask tool and drag it into the schematic. Immediately you'll notice there's a red dot indicating there is an issue or a problem with this node. And the problem with this node is that the garbage mask has to have a front input to have any value. So there are several different ways of connecting a node that we've already seen. I could click off of an output node such as the yellow and drag and drop it onto the input, the red, when it's highlighted and I've made the connection. You can also cut a connection by clicking just down on an empty area and drag across a connection point and it will cut that connection for you automatically. Another way of connecting your nodes is by clicking on the output and then clicking on the input of a node. For example, if I click on the yellow output of my footage and then come over and click on the red input of the garbage mask, it then will create the connection. Let me click across and cut that connection. Another great method of connecting your nodes is using the option key and kissing the nodes or the connection points together. This is called the auto link option. For example, I take my garbage mask tool. I hold the option key. I'm going to kiss or touch together the output of the yellow footage to the input red of the garbage mask and a connection is made. Also notice that the output of the garbage mask automatically connected to the input blue of the color warper at the same time. This is exactly what I wanted, but it's a great example of how sometimes you might accidentally connect 
inputs and outputs that you don't want to have connected using the auto link or the option key method. So let me click across and disconnect both of those again. Because besides the option key, you can add one more modifying keystroke to use what is called the advanced auto link. So for example, again, I have my garbage mask selected. I hold the option key down and I click once on the shift key. You see an extended connection point comes out for the front. If I hit the shift key again while holding down the option key, I now have the mat output extended further. So this is what I was talking about. This is a great method. So now I know for sure I can easily kiss and connect the yellow output of my footage to the red input of my garbage mask. And then if I want, I can select my color warper, hold the option key, and I can toggle with the shift key multiple times until I get the matte output as I want. I kiss and connect that to the yellow output of the garbage mask. So now we have our footage going into the color warper, but we also have our footage going into a garbage mask, but then the garbage mask goes into the matte input for the color warper. And with the garbage mask selected, this viewport is set to look at the result. Right now, I have not created a mask, so there is no result. All we see is solid white. So to draw my mask, I'm going to come over to the viewing options, expand it, go to my garbage mask inputs, and choose the front, or I could have hit the F1 key. I'll also hide my effects nodes by clicking the button, and then over in this viewport, I'll click the Add button. Now I can come and draw a garbage mask along the edge of these buildings. If this was obviously true production, we would be a little more careful with the garbage mask that we're creating. We can fine tune it in a second, but I'm just gonna quickly finish drawing this. So now my mask has been drawn. The default with the garbage mask is to have the Bezier curves. On the preferences, I could have changed that, but I didn't. But a very quick way of breaking all these tangent handles at once is to hold the command key. I'll region select all of them, and in my tool list, I'll switch my tool to be the break tangent tool. Then I can just click on one of these, and then all of the corner points will be broken, and they'll now all be corner tangents. I'll go back to my select tool. Now if I switch my view, once again, to be the end result for my garbage mask, you can see the mat we are creating. I'll activate the outside option because I want to invert this mask. Now if we select our color warper, we can see the color correction that we've created is only affecting the buildings in the front, not the buildings in the back because the mask is controlling what the color correction is affecting. And if we wanted to alter or change our color correction, we can increase in saturation, maybe taking our black and even darken it a little more and so on. But now I want to composite a graphic element over this clip and I want to do this in 3D space. So I'm going to need to use what's called the action tool. Action is the 3D compositor inside of ConnectFX. I'll hold control and option and click and drag in the schematic view to zoom back a little bit. This is going to give me a little more room to work with my nodes. I'll go back to my effects node and as I said, I want to find the action tool. I'll hit the A key with my cursor over the nodes so only the tools that start with A are highlighted. I'll take the action tool and drag it into the schematic. I'll zoom back in by holding the option and the control again. The action tool only has one input by default and obviously an output with the main result. And you'll notice that it's a green input indicating that's a back. If I hide the effects nodes once again and I look at the media tab for the action tool, here's where you'll have a list of all the media that is imported or part of the action tool. And as we can see, there is no inputs. We haven't connected anything yet. So I'll take the action tool, I'll hold the option key, and I'll hit the shift key, exposing my back input. I'll kiss and connect the end result of the color warper to the input for the back. Now we can see the back is the input for our action tool. I'll then click on the action output, highlighted it, and then click on the red input for the output node. And now we have our connections made. The graphic element I want to bring in here is actually broken into two different clips. There's the RGB clip, and then there's a mat. So let me go down in my media library, go to the graphic folder, and I'll select both of those clips, and I'll drag them into my schematic. And you can see both clips are now brought in. As I said, we have our front image, and we have a mat, and we're going to composite them together in the action tool. 
If I select the action tool, I want to create a new layer input. So down on the media tab, I have a couple options. One reads new media, which means I would import new media, but I already have the media in the schematic. I just need to create an input to connect it to. So I'll choose new input and you'll see in the media source, you'll see a new media layer is available, but nothing is connected to it. It reads internal, but you'll see in the schematic an extender has been added. This is the inputs for this layer. Let me zoom in a little bit. It has the red input for the main RGB, the front, and it has the blue input for the mat. I'll simply connect the output of the RGB clip into the front input, and then I'll connect the yellow output of the mat into the blue mat input of the action layer. Then I can select the action node, and we can see the end result of what the composite is doing. So hopefully this video has helped you understand the nodes and what the different color input and outputs represent, plus how you can connect your nodes very easily inside of ConnectEffects.